Okay, so we're going to do a problem in Civil Drafting Technology 8th edition book, page 127, uh, problem 4 or 5, in which we're given a page on which it's supposed to be scaled 1 inches 200 feet. So we use our engineer scale uh, to measure the coordinates off of this off of this page or this map. And then we're given instructions on building or drawing roads and rivers and croplands and making a map out of it. So uh, I have on an Excel sheet written down the points and their x and y coordinates from the actual um, paper. What I want to do is use this and import them into ArcGIS to um, make start the map. So what I want to do first is add a couple layers and that'll change the coordinate system as well. I want to change the coordinate system and get some layers in. So I already have a project started here. And so in the uh, geodatabase, I'm going to create a new feature class. This one will be the boundary and it's just going to be a polygon. I don't need z values or m values for any of this. It goes through, and none of this is going to matter except for the coordinate system. And we'll use the New Mexico West uh, coordinate state plane coordinate system. And we'll just finish that. So we'll just make a blank feature class, polygon feature class, on which. I'm going to draw the border and then I'll put some points and then we'll draw the roads and lines, uh, roads and rivers on a line feature. So I'll go ahead and make those now. And feature class, this one's going to be linear features, so I'll just call it linear, make them lines. Um, same state plane, coordinate system, and finish. The point layer is going to be not a table. And we'll just call this points. They're going to be point. Don't need z values either, although those are nice to have, but not in this case. And finish. Okay, so I've made three layers for the map here, and I'll add that. And now I want to draw it. <clears throat> I do want to zoom in to the coordinate system on which this is. So this is the New Mexico West strip of coordinates. So we're going to zoom in to where our campus is. Not too far in. This is probably good enough. I can put my cursor somewhere around there, it doesn't really matter, and I want to look at the uh, coordinates just down at the bottom, although I don't want to see degrees, minutes, and seconds, so I'm just going to use feet as my display units. Um, well, first of all, I want to change the coordinate system. I thought I was going to anyway, but, um, oh, no, um, I think I have it under favorites. There we go. So now the map is projected to the same coordinate system as the layers, and that way I can. Oops. Um, now I can pick feet. Now I can see the x and y, or northings and eastings, or eastings and northings, of the of the map just by moving the cursor around. So I can see that in the X direction or the Easting, I'm around 2,600,000. I'm just gonna round it to the nearest 100,000. So 2,600,000 and 2,100,000. So, and the reason for using that is I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna get the, I'll just call it the Eastings and Northings that way, and it's just going to equal um, 2,600,000 plus 
uh, the x-coordinate. So that way all these points will be shifted or basically moved to that point. So it'll be a nice easy way to get all these coordinates in there. And likewise, I'm going to use uh, 2 million <laughs> uh, 100,000. So plus the y coordinate. And I'll fill that down. OK. So these are going to be my x and y coordinates for the points. All I have to draw now is I'll import these points in. I might as well just save this now, save as an, a CSV file would work. Although I think in ArcGIS 2.6, it'll take an Excel file now. I haven't tried it yet because I just installed this. So let's just change the type to CSV normal garden variety. And I'll just call it problem four five points. Okay. Um, I should be able to import this into a table. Just replaced it. Okay, I'm going to keep all the fields in there. Um, not that I have to, but that'll be fine. Okay, there's the table. And at this point, I should be able to um, display the XY data, although um, it may be easier just to go back to my catalog at this point. We used to be able to just display the XY points and convert it to a shapefile or something, but I do want them to be um, immediately editable. So right clicking on the table in the geodatabase and um, creating um, a feature class, exporting this uh, to a point feature class allows me to get the easting for the X coordinates and the northing for the Y coordinates no Z field and the coordinate system again current map that way I can have the right coordinate system and I just want to call that points again let's run that for some reason it asks for it twice but it's good to make sure that it has it go. So if I zoom in on this, I should see all the points that are on the, on the grid. At this point, pardon the pun, I'm going to draw on the boundary layer the edit ribbon and create, and then I'll click on boundary, and then I'll pick rectangle. That way I can draw the boundary of for all these points. So it's going to be down here in the lower left corner, basically right underneath that point and right at that point. I already know what the coordinates are, so I'm just going to right click and you choose an absolute Z at 2,600,000 and 2,100,000 for the Y. Um, I think I messed up on that. Okay. 
there we go. And then the direction, I just want it to be, um, if we use polar, we can put it right at 90 degrees. And that'll set the rectangle in the, in the correct direction. Then I can right click and just change its height to 1600 and its width to 1200 as measured on, in the book. Okay, um, there we go, save the edits. So there's our boundary, we'll be adding to that um, shortly. Okay, so I'm going to make it hollow so I can kind of see in it. Not that that's super important, but I'll just use a black outline for it and deselect it. Okay, so now I have my points and my boundary. So I can start following the instructions in the book, which are on the previous pages, and we'll look through those. Um, <clears throat> draw a hard surface medium duty road from point A to point F. So um, that's going to be our first step, easy enough. I'll drag the linear feature in and we'll create and just draw a straight, straight line snapping to those points. And so my snapping is on and I can see that I'm snapping to enough features to get, to get going here. So um, These points are a little bit off, but we're drawing a point from that point to that point, and F2 finishes that line, so there's there's one medium surface, uh, hard surface medium duty road from point A to point F. Now I can't really tell which points are which necessarily, so maybe I want to just label them real quick. So in when I select the points here, I'm going to go to labeling and just turn on labeling and the field is going to be on point so that is what I want okay let's take a look at the attribute table here doesn't look like it's showing up should be okay We'll let that think about it for a while and see what um, it's going to do. Anyway, I should see uh, labels on those. Looks like my map's just slightly off here. Okay. Um, that's. I'm pretty sure that was correct. Anyway, I'll continue on and we'll see what's going on with that. So beginning 975 feet from point A, draw a bridge over a 40 foot wide river. So I'm going to put another point basically. So on that, on this line, on this uh, medium surface road, um, oh maybe I need to save here. Okay, so I'm going to draw some points. And I can't, I don't know where 975 feet is along this line, but I can use basically a create points along line tool. And there are three options. The third option meaning a varying distance where I can type in a distance. So that is what I want from the start. Um, I want to type in the distance of 975 and just one point, and that's the default, and create. And there it is. So there's the um, 40 foot wide river. Okay. Um, the center of the river runs through all these points and the, well, I'd imagine that bridge. Okay. So um, on the line layer, I don't need to select it actually, but just in the edit ribbon, create panel again, linear, and I'm just going to draw a line and then we'll smooth it out. So a line, and I'm just going to start at point A, B, the bridge, C, or uh, D and E. There we go. And I'll just draw off the edge here a little, just to see that. Okay, F2. So that's the river, but it doesn't look so great because it um, has sharp bends in it. So um, one thing I can do is, while I'm working on that, is edit the vertices of that. And 
Um, I just want to change these straight lines into um, nice controllable arcs. So I can change the segment. Uh, I don't really want a circular arc, but a Bezier curve allows me to make smooth lines from it. So I'm just going to bend the line and just give it a nice uh, slight curvature in and out of the line. So I'm going to do that for every segment of these Bezier handles, as they're called. Um, allows me to um, control. See, um, now once I've bent it once, um, it's going to kind of hold it there. But holding the control key allows me to change the curvature in and out of the point individually or independently. So I'm going to need to do that um, over and over here. So Bezier again, control click, and make a nice smooth curve um, coming in and out of each each line. Okay, one more. Control, holding the control key down, changing the curvature. I don't need to hold the control key down on, on the one that doesn't have it on both sides, doesn't have a curvature on both sides. I'm just going to line that up so it's kind of straight with that straight line. Um, so I don't have to change this one. That could be a straight line coming out of coming off the map. So then we'll just adjust the curvature. Nice and smooth. Uh, good enough. Okay, F2 or click the green checkbox at the bottom to commit those changes. And uh, there's, there's our nice river. So let's clear the selection, save our edits. Save often. Okay, so there's our river. Uh, step H at 420 feet point uh, from point A along the hard surface road, draw an improved light duty road. So I need another point along this. So I need my select tool. So I'm going to get a create points along a line at a distance of. 420 feet and just one point. Great. So from that point to the point at the bottom of the map, uh, at point G, I'm going to draw another line. So save that and go back, click on linear, click a straight line, and snap, snap. F2, we'll click the green checkbox at the bottom, and there's our, uh, what is it? hard surface uh, light duty road, or a, an improved light duty road. Okay, that's step H. Step I is a small creek enters the river at point C. The creek is straight and runs for 385 feet at an angle of 40, uh, at a 45 degree angle, and then turns with a radius of 200, approximately due north. Well, okay, so basically it, uh, I'm still drawing a line here, so I'm just gonna start a line at point C and then I just need a, well, direction and distance. How about that? So uh, direction of north, 45 degrees east, for three, whoop, 385 feet. And the quadrant bearing north, 45 degrees east is, uh, yep. Let's just draw that. And then. It says uh, approximately due north, um, so I, I could just eyeball it, but um, might as well just do a um, direction, first of all, and we'll just set that at north, zero degrees west. And then I can just set the line in, in F2 for finish. Okay. So we're going to trim those ends off a little bit just to tidy up our map, but that was step I. All right. Um, step J, north of the medium duty road and southwest of the river, the entire area is orchard within 200 feet of the river. So here's where I'm going to need to edit my map a little bit. So um, I'm just going to deselect everything and use... Uh, the trim, let's see, reshape, 
extend or trim tool and so I should be able to um, allow extend or trim without a selection so extend or trim if I get close enough see if I if I trim it might look at that point but if I get close enough to the end and click it'll extend it to that edge and likewise this is obvious it's going to trim that it's going to trim there um, yeah I'm not real sure I'm going to trim that anyway and extend it and that will just fix my map which I don't exactly know why it may have just um, set it off just a little bit because I changed the coordinate system whereas I drew the the map I don't know it shouldn't have, it should have mapped it should have worked anyway okay so um, I've trimmed and extended and it's it's pretty important that I do this to the edge of the boundary because I need to you know I'm, I'm gonna cut the boundary up so yeah I have all the points I need okay so let's save that again okay now I can address uh, point J where um, well almost I within 200 feet of the river so there's a tool that allows me to do this and that is um, copy parallel which is um, basically an offset so I'm going to use this tool and I'm just going to it gives me the direction so I know that I need to go to the right so this area in here is orchard within 200 feet so I'm just going to offset this um, and I don't think I want to miter the corners but um, I need to round them so, yeah and I set the distance of 200 for the there we go and go ahead and click copy and then I can trim um, this area off although I don't really have to because I'm going to be getting rid of that pretty soon anyway okay um, step K so I'm just delineating this area first and we'll actually cut this boundary up using the split tool um, once we get all the better areas in um, speaking of which I'm gonna, I need to round that off with the 200 foot radius I forgot about that and that is a fillet tool um, so I'm going to select the line first and use my fillet tool and I'm going to set a fixed radius of 200 feet and my options over here the modify features and click click and then I can pick which side this goes on there's actually four options here but the only one is obvious and then it does that so save that so now I have that 45 degree line curving with a 200 foot radius up to the top of the map north so, okay um, there is a the area south of the medium duty road and west of light duty road is a corn crop so that that area is already done so that's a corn crop here an orchard here um, on both sides of the small creek is a grove of deciduous trees a hundred feet wide so that's a copy parallel so I have the line selected already and this time I want both sides of the line so I'm going to do both for 100 feet I'll copy it and again uh, I can clear the features and use the trim extend tool or the and zoom in a little bit just make sure I can extend these features these are fine because uh, they were just copied and that is vertical if this was not quite north it might have been a little short on one side and a little long on the other side or whatever but uh, there we go save again okay did that work might need to trim this other end. Okay. 
Oh, I think I already got it. Okay, I guess I must have gotten it. Okay, so in this area is a grove of deciduous trees. All right. All other areas are grassland, so that's nice. And then, um, so basically, once I delineate these three areas, all the rest are going to be uh, grassland. So we'll split that up accordingly. Last step, at 200 feet northeast of the bridge, and on the north side of the medium duty road is a Forest Service headquarters. So um, I would just draw a line. So back to my create panel, and on the line, I would start the line at this point and do a direction distance. Um, the direction, it just says northeast, so that to me is 45 degrees. And 200 feet. So that gives me where to put the, the point. So finish that. And I'm just going to draw a point, snap it to the end of the line, and that's my Forest Service headquarters. So let's finish that, save all the edits. Um, at this point, it might be, well, not quite time for a cleanup, but um, I'm going to just select this one line and delete it because that was just a construction line to find that point. Okay. So now, with everything cleared, selection cleared, um, I can start slicing up this uh, boundary. So I'm going to select my boundary and use the split tool. Now the split tool is um, basically I can just click outside an area, click inside, and then outside an F2, and it splits it into two pieces. Right? So now it's this piece and this piece. Okay, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to discard that edit. Oh, well, let me go ahead and delete that and save that edit. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the split tool to, um, well, cut up the crop area and the, well, the corn crop and the orchard area and this grove of deciduous trees around this, this creek. So um, I'll start with the easiest one. Um, so I'm just going to, it's all straight lines, so I don't need to, well, I have some other tools here, but um, let's go to linear endpoint. And I don't need to actually finish that um, because it's along the boundary that I'm splitting. So I just hit F2 or click on the green checkbox or right click and finish either way. Now this area flashes for me showing what it did cut and there you are. Now I have two polygons and if I want to check I can sh control double click on the boundary uh, layer and it'll open up the attribute table and now I can see I have two polygons going on here. So that's nice. I'll leave that open. Okay, next area is this orchard so um, which is nice but I'm gonna use the trace tool to do this so I'm still in well I'm gonna I'm still in my split tool over here so um, well, now I am <laughs> and I'm gonna use the trace tool there's other tools we can use but trace is what I want to use so I'm gonna start at this vertex or boundary and I'm just I'm just, I, I don't have my hands on the mouse or anything. I'm just moving the mouse and I'm just following up the direction of, of the line of the boundary I want. And I'll click at the end and then F2. Try it again. That should do it. Um, choose the select tool. Did that even do it? Let me try that split tool again. Maybe I need to click at the beginning. I think I do. Maybe I forgot to click. Uh, use the trace tool. Another 
click if it's not doing what you want you just just click on the line and it'll start to read it so I'll click at that end and F2 Split fail geometry must intersect polylines and polygons in two or more places. Okay, so let's escape. Let's try that again. I do have it selected, although it says allow splitting without a selection. Well, I want that off because I do want this to be this polygon that's highlighted in cyan to be what I want to split. So um, I can just select the line tool, click outside of it, click on my endpoint. Maybe it was snapping not to where I want. Now I can trace. And follow the line. Now I'll click outside of it. Now F2. A little off there, but I think we're okay. Okay, so now I have both those uh, polygons selected. Um, clear the selection, get the select tool, and select the last. So now I have this polygon, this polygon, and this polygon. So I want to split this polygon into now this is all curves, so the split tool with, um, I'll start here, I use the trace tool, and click on this edge, and follow the edge, try not to creep up the wrong line, click, and F2. There, it looks like that split it nicely. So, okay, now I have all four areas of this polygon selected. So, clear, save those edits. Okay, so now I can delete this line that I only needed to delineate the polygon. So, that helps um, see what, what the boundaries of each polygon are. Okay. Um, now that I have all four of them selected, um, I mean uh, split up, I'm pretty much done. All I need to do is do the cartography part of it, which is, you know, symbolizing and labeling and, and such. So let's look at the um, polygons first. So um, I might go select on, this is going to be orchard, and how do I distinguish it from being an orchard? Um, each one does have a different object ID, so uh, potentially I could um, just just symbolize each number by its you know in, in by its distinct or individual number. But I think it's easier to add a field, and I'll just make a field to label it with as well. So um, well, I don't know if I need to label it just with a legend or something. So type would be the kind of field it is, or the type of field. It's going to be a text field and tabbing over uh, shouldn't need more than 50 characters that'll keep it keep it nice so save that okay so i've added a type field that is a text field and has 50 characters in length I'll close that so this type field now i have the orchard if i could remember you just type in orchard well that's a little tricky so I, that was that was correct, I guess. But um, instead of having to remember, I can work with the attributes panel and just select the. So this I know in my map um, is a corn crop. So I'm just going to type that in for that field, and then this polygon here is a. Let's call it a grove. 
and the rest of it is grassland. Save those edits. So just changing attributes or, or text and numbers in the in the table also requires a save on those on those edits. Okay. I can do the same thing with my line uh, layer. So control double click on the layer and I'm going to add a, another field called type. It's going to be text, tab over, and I don't think I need more than 50 characters for that as well. So there we go. And as long as I'm at it, I can do the points layer the same way. So I'm going to add a type field here. Text, and I only need 25 probably, or maybe I should go 50 and save. Okay. So now I um, can do the same thing to, just as I did with my polygons, I can do to my lines. So this is a, this is, this road is going to differ from this medium duty hard surface road is going to differ from the other roads. So I'm going to go with um, just medium um, duty. For the type, and this one's just going to be light duty, because those are the only two roads I have in this map. If I had more, I would definitely do more. Um, this one is, what did they call it, a river? Yes, so this is classified as a river, and this is called a creek, or a small stream but creek, small stream. Um, no, it actually calls it a creek. <laughs> okay. Um, so that is all the lines. <laughs> so points. So I'm going to save those edits. And I'm going to click on some of these points. So um, start with point A. Actually, I'm going to open up the attribute table here because I have a lot of points. Uh, the original points were just survey points, basically A through G. So I'm going to just click on the left bar um, and drag down from 1 to 7. So that's A through G. And all those, I can just type them in here for the type. I'll just call those survey points. Okay, so. Oh, um, I need to highlight them here too. So holding, clicking on the first one, shift clicking the last one, and then typing in the name, then they all get the name. There we go. So they have to be highlighted, selected in the table, highlighted for editing on the, in the attributes pane to change its attribute. So, okay. Um, then I can clear or cut, shut the, um, Attribute table down. This was the forest service headquarters. I have auto apply checked here, so all I have to do is type it in, hit enter, and it does it. Otherwise, if that's off, I have to click the apply button down at the bottom, so that's an extra step, so that helps. Um, there's another point here. Oh, that's a bridge, right? So, bridge. Okay. Auto apply, and basically I'm I'm done with all the data editing. So I can save one more time. Now I want to symbolize and label. Okay, so I tried labeling these points. Let's see what's going on here. Labeling. Doesn't seem to like to do it. Um, so let's go to. <laughs> I have to figure that out. Why it's not labeling my points? Um, anyway, I do want to change the 
what the points look like. These little flags are great for maps, but not for this. So I'm going to use unique values. So each point gets a different symbol based on its type. Now I'm not too concerned with the color. Um, all of their values I don't need, so I'm going to right click on its label. And so I only have I have a null point here, um, apparently, but let's, I don't think I do, actually. Any null values? Yeah, what's this one? Oh, that point actually goes away. So can I delete? Yeah, I guess I... There, I just had to activate the screen and then hit delete, and so that point is no longer there. And so now, based on that, I'm going to go to symbology and unique values again. It rereads it, hopefully. <laughs> um, survey, bridge, and forest service. Those are the only three types I have. So let's just remove the null label just manually, and there we go. Um, as far as the symbol goes, go, I, I can click on either in the table of contents, like the bridge symbol or the survey symbols. Let's use just a little X for that. I don't know if I have a little X in here. I don't. So if I go to properties and the structure, no. How about layers? Then I can change the shape marker to a... Um, well, maybe how about a procedural marker? No, I don't need that um, shape marker. Those are all the style. Oh, yeah, maybe there's an X in here. No, those are all the styles in there, so I don't really want that. Um, how about font? Yeah, there's a nice X. That's what I was looking for. So I'm just going to use that for... I don't know if the size is good enough, 10 point font. Um, yeah, sure. So nice little X's uh, around where the survey points are. So good enough for that. Let's go back to, I'm going to click on the Forest Service. And I kind of just need a building for that. And so maybe if I type in building, yeah, one of these, maybe with a flag on it or something. How about school? If there was a school, it might have a flag on it. Let's try that one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep that. And maybe I would want the color to be more green for you, for a service. Maybe a little brighter green than that, huh? A little darker than that. Keep clicking on the wrong one. Too dark. Why don't I like that quite enough? How about like that? Okay, so I just edit it just a little bit and apply. I think the size needs to go a little bit bigger too because it's this, this single point symbol. So I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, there's my Forest Service headquarters. Um, I also have a bridge here. This, um, this requires a little bit of um, the other kind, right? So under instead of a shape marker, I'm going to use a picture marker and just pick a file. I do have a file in somewhere in my documents, maybe bridge symbol. Yeah, I just created this with a simple, and maybe this needs to be big, maybe a 50 point font. Let's see what that looks like. Um, apply. I might need to rotate that. Okay, that's too big. <laughs> maybe 20. And apply. That's a little better. And I'm going to rotate it around at this angle. Um, I can measure that angle, but let's just look at, let's go with 30 degrees. Maybe 32 degrees. Wrong way about 28 degrees okay that's probably good enough so that's a bridge um, allowing the river to go under it and the 
road to go over it. <laughs> All right, so there's my symbology for the points. Um, filling the boundary symbols, I have the types for that. So if I highlight boundary and use symbology and unique values, I'm not going to use shape length as my field for that, but type. And I don't need all other values because I already have the four. And that looks great. Not really. Um, I have symbols that I can use for each of these. Let's use, let's pick one for grassland. Um, should be able to find a decent in, uh, type of symbol for grass. Um, yeah, park might be pretty good. Um, yeah, or if you wanted kind of a textured kind of symbol, maybe there's grass. I don't know how that's going to look. Um, I don't like that as well as there's sports turf. And as far as its properties go, I think all we have is color. So um, yeah, that's that's great. Okay, we're going to keep it grassland. Uh, it's very simple. Um, we'll get a little more creative, maybe with the grove of trees. So if I have, um, I do um, have under the uh, properties here, for the fill, I want a picture fill. And the picture I have, I believe, in... Um, Let's see. I have an orchard symbol here. Oh, um, yeah, maybe I don't want a picture fill, but just a pattern fill. Let me cancel that. I'll do a picture fill for something else. So some sort of um, hatched fill. You know, how about a solid fill? back to the gallery. I don't know what kind these are. How about mangrove? Looks pretty okay. So it loads the symbol up and that could be a grove of trees easily so I'm okay with that. And it has the word grove in it so that's good. Um, next one. This is an orchard so that's the one I want to put like a tree so I'm going to change the solid, the fill to a picture and browse for a good picture. And I think I have an orchard symbol. I think this third one is good. And I'll have to, yeah, that, that's pretty small. <laughs> so let's try 50 on that. Okay, so there's nice rows, columns of trees. Um, pretty good. Okay, we'll call that good. And last one, corn crop. And that's also a picture. I think I have a corn symbol. And that might need very similar. sizing, maybe a little smaller. Okay, so I made this tiled uh, corn stalk kind of image and offset them so it looks like a nice array of, of corn stalks. Okay, so anyway, there's the symbology of it and we have, um, I didn't do too much with the linear features, so let's do the same thing basically. The only difference here is, um, you know, I have four different kinds here. Um, if I go to type, so I don't need all the values because I know I've populated all those. So, um, is there a null in this? Let's see if I missed one. There's a couple lines here. Hold the control key and click these two. Oh, those are the boundaries. Yeah, I can take care of those. I, um, I don't need those anymore, so I can delete those. 
and that works pretty good. So back to my symbology panel for my lines. I can remove the null. And so now I have creek. The creek could be a simple, I bet there's one in the gallery, um, some sort of water line. Um, that's great, but I might want to add that, take the properties uh, maybe a little brighter than than your typical, you know, maybe 1.5 in thickness. Let's just see what that looks like. So that's a nice creek. Um, the river, let's just click on that, and it'll jump over here. And I'll just make that the same color, but maybe twice as thick. So there's the, the river. How about the medium duty road? Just a thick black line. We should be fine with that. Maybe a dark three point line. And the light duty road, last one. Uh, maybe even a lighter gray, perhaps, and a 1.5 in the thickness. There. Okay, pretty much done with the symbolic. That, that was a lot of work actually in the mapping of it, and this is where I need to save the project itself. This is where all that work goes, whereas before all the drawing and stuff goes into the, the data itself. Okay, so now all I want to do is lay this map out and print it, or export it to a PDF or something. So I'm going to go to the insert ribbon and set up a new layout. And it's just a letter portrait layout. And it gives me a blank layout of a 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And I'm going to add a new map frame here at the extent I have it, um, which is fine. Um, I'm going to change its properties here in a minute anyway. So just that should be fine to fit it. Um, I do have that world topographic map on there, so I'm going to take that off. OK. Um, I don't have the scale I want here, so I'm just going to type in 2400, which is 1 inches 200 feet. So now it's at the right scale. But if I want to like move this around on the page, I'm stuck because I'm just zooming and panning in the page, like paper space in, in CAD or something. So a right click and activate allows me to zoom and pan, although I don't want to change my zoom level. But I do want to set where the pan is, and then I can just go back to layout or click the left arrow, and now I can zoom on the paper. Okay, I can edit the properties also of the elements of my map. So I have this elements uh, format um, options here, and display. I can let's go with three points on the border, so a little thicker of the border. Okay, so all I want to do is add a north arrow. Maybe not that north arrow. How about this north arrow? So a nice little north arrow there. Um, a scale bar would be nice, but on a map that uses uh, one inch is 200 feet, I'd rather use that as dynamic text and just use a relative scale. So I can add that to maybe the bottom of the map somewhere. We'll lay these out a little bit better in a minute. So as a default, it picks to miles, but Let's go to its properties. So under this format, um, let's go to the what is that options, and I'm going to change this to feet, and maybe I'm going to click on the scale button and change the map units from miles to feet. So now one inch is equal to the feet feet. So there we go. There's another kind of scale, which is an absolute scale, or a rel representative fraction, that'll add to it, and that's just a, a straight-up fraction. So there we go. So now we have our scales in there. So North Arrow Scale, title would be good. So let's add a title to our map. So that's just, it could be dynamic text if I had set it up a little bit better, but anyway, I'm just going to use a rectangular text across the top here, type in the title. This is... Um, Problem 4-5, good enough. OK, so I can highlight that text and go to the text symbol. 
under its appearance I can change the font to a good title-ish size and there we go okay similarly um, you can add like your name and date and things like that I'll forego that part of it but um, the last part besides that would be a legend so I'm going to add a legend in here and I'll just put it off to the side and now this legend will add everything in the let me see if I can add some more without it losing okay there we go so um, some of these names don't really um, read well um, such as points A <laughs> So back in my map, I'm going to change some of the names of, of these layers so it just look it reads better in our. Um, actually, I can do that in the layout as well. So um, it's a little harder to find. <laughs> F2, and I can just change that to um, point features maybe, and that makes it a little bit easier to understand what's going on with it. Point features type, that eh, makes more sense. Uh, linear, so maybe I would call this. Uh, F2, uh, rivers and roads, and the type. Um, how about the boundary? Um, that's a little trickier. What do I call that? Um, area features. How about that? So, what's nice about the legend is it updates as I change those things. And so, um, I think my attribute names are okay. Um, they're capitalized and everything, so I'm all good. That, so that reads much better. Um, I'm running out of room just slightly, so maybe I could activate... There we go. And pan this over just a little bit more, not all the way. And that gives this a little more room to nudge. Oh, I got to go back to layout <laughs> and click on my legend. And I'm going to hold the control key down and or the shift key if you want bigger movements. Um, but the control key and the arrowing will nudge uh, my, my um, objects around. So I'm going to shift arrow this one so it gets up a little bit. So I'm balancing that out a little bit. So I would have my name and date at the bottom to balance that out a little also, and that would be the end of this project. So again, in layout view, if you go to share, we can export that or print it. Um, the export, to turn it in um, electronically um, through, the, through the course Canvas page, um, PDF is great. Just make sure you know where you're saving it. Uh, everything else is pretty good. 300 dots per inch on the vectors, basically all the lines will get rendered at that. And just click export if you know where it's going, what its name is. That'll be this browse as you're used to. So let's call that the day.